all these things why not to stand all of you so okay stand up just to, to be more active yeah okay now nice lecture i will sit for company please stop sorry now, these are the devices. These are the devices. Before I start, I will thank you so much. I have learned from him a lot, and some of the photos and videos I will show, they are related to him. Now, if you have such this case, this has no stickers. No previous trauma, no knee injury since the age of seven years. What do you think? What's the cause of that? Anyone has seen such a case? No one has seen that. No previous trauma, knee sickness, many years ago. So we'll come to this later. Now, if you have such fracture, this patient presents to you after one year after uh, this fracture, which was treated relatively. And this is the range of motion. What do you think? What's the cause? I think this it's the quadriceps tethering. Rather yeah. Than intra you mean extra articular? Extra, I think. And what about this scar? So it seems that maybe intra articular fracture and you didn't answer to. So is it intra articular or extra articular or what? Both. So what we have to do? Atmospheric actualizes or the release. Release of the quadriceps muscle. What about the post of rehab? So this is the living objective of uh, my talk to define the causes of the of the knee and to discuss the principle of treatment and the steps for successful arthroscopic arthrolysis and to appreciate the importance of extra articular causes, not only to think of the knee itself and the importance of post op rehabilitation. Now uh, they are relatively common in our, our practice, these treatments. Uh, they are common with knee injury and the articular uh, knee injury. We may have flexion contractor, decision contractor, or combined. Some of these terms may be sometimes misleading. So you can say that we have the patient has extension loss, or, which means flexion contractor, or uh, flexion loss, extension contractor, so, or combined flexion and extension loss. This may make communication better, because if I told you the patient has extension loss, you will have to think of that, uh, uh, extension contraction. You may think, is it friction loss? So maybe to use these terms may be easier to describe. Now, intra-articular causes of friction loss could be uh, intra-articular causes or uh, like intra-articular adhesions and contracture of the capsule. And we see in our practice cases of arthrofibrosis where all the capsular tissue contracted with intra-articular adhesion. So this is, could be intra-articular or could be extra-articular. Like here, if you have this feathering tissue adhesion which prevent the gliding of the uh, muscle or it could be muscle contraction, contraction of the quadriceps muscle itself or it could be patella inferior. You know that patella inferior uh, can cause flexion loss? You know that? I'll show you the mechanism now. Now, it could be only extra-articular, like malalignment of the fracture, so the patient cannot do for inflection of the knee because of this bony malalignment, or it could be intra-articular malunion, where there would be impingement, and this is will not correct without bony procedure, so we have to define the cause. This is how the inflection uh, loss happen with patella inferior. We know the roll pack mechanism. When we do flexion, there is roll pack in the femur, and this requires the patella to translate posterior. So, if we have patella alta, it can move more posterior. If patella inferior, it can move less, and this will prevent the roll pack mechanism compared to the normal side. And this is a cause of flexion loss, especially if the cathode condition index is less than 0.6. So, we have to think of that before going to do quadriceps plastic to check for pos possible material. Yeah. Now, the causes of extension less, again, we may have posterior contracture, so capsular contracture, or even muscular contracture like five hamstrings or gastrocnemia. So we have to have proper diagnosis. 
it could be anterior impingement. And this is, I think, common in our practice, especially after arthroscopic surgery. You may have impingement in the notch by cycloplegion or some kind of pocket handle tear and preventing full extension. And it could be bony, like uh, osteophyte and intraarticular fracture membrane. Again, this is the ligament contracture of the crochet. This is one important cause of uh, extension loss. And this is because of immobilization. We have seen in our practice patients who have severe ankle sprain, and they went to the ER, pop slab, and the doctor keep the slab, back slab for a long time, and this presents with loss of last degrees of extension. So this is very difficult to treat, so we have to be aware about that. Now, is it important to define the cause? True, because we have to define which procedure. If the cause is soft tissue or body, intraarticular or extraarticular, so do we need to do soft tissue procedure or body or combined? This depends on the cause. So to have proper management, we have to have proper diagnosis, and then after that to put proper plan. Now, to diagnose, we have to do analysis of each individual case. And we we'll come to what type of questions or analysis we have to do. And the aim of these questions or analysis to determine the source of the stiffness so that we can put our plan to address that causes and to decide which procedure and which prognosis. Now the first question, is it the injury, intraarticular or extraarticular? Why this is important? Because if, if we have a patient with patellar fracture, which was operated and has knee stiffness, so this is intra or extraarticular. This is intraarticular. So if the patient has fracture, still femur, multiple previous surgery, come with limitation of flexion, this is intra or extraarticular. So, so we have to decide that to decide when what to do. To do intraarticular, just simple arthroscopic, somewhat simple arthroscopic procedure, or we have to go more for open surgical uh, relief. And the second question: How long? Because if you have patient with patellar fracture, which was operated and he has knee stiffness for three years, do you think it's just intraarticular cause? Because if you don't bend the knee for three years, you will have muscle contraction. So the, the, the previous rule about intra or extra is not applied here. If you have long chronic cases, the extra articular cause can lead intra articular contractures of the capsule, and the intra articular can cause extra articular contractures of the muscle. So the, the time period is important. And the other question was the previous injury closed or open? Because we know with open injuries, we have excessive scarring and fibrosis and so on. The other question is there was well, the use of external fixator, either spanning the joint or not spanning the joint, because we know the shunt screw limit gliding of the muscle and can cause contracture of the muscle and adhesion. And those expect spanning the joint for a long time, which should be, I think, should be avoided. This can lead to very bad type of knee stiffness. And the, the last question, is there intraarticular malunion, like the photo I showed? If you have intraarticular malunion, we we'll never will get full motion without full procedure. And uh, is there osteoarthrosis or not? Because no mean to do arthrolysis and advanced arthritis. Now, treatment principles, we have arthroscopic and open surgical uh, techniques. We all uh, like to, to do arthroscopic surgery or uh, minimal invasive techniques. So these are not always applicable. So this depends on the cause, and we have to decide uh, to have precise diagnosis because if we don't address all the causes together, this will, will may lead to failure. Bony impingement should be treated first, and fractures must be healed. So we don't have to do arthrolysis and manipulation and so on if the fracture not healed. The priority is always to the fracture healing because the worst combination if you have stiff knee with periarticular fracture non So we have to wait three to six months and priority is given to one healing.
Now, the post-operative rehabilitation and care is very important, and I think this is a success key for success. And this should include good analgesia and rehabilitation. And sometimes we apply catheter, like femoral nerve catheter for post-operative uh, analgesia. CBM, who use CBM? CBM. We don't have much data about that. Uh, there's more studies after uh, arthritis for total knee replacement. Uh, but it's very helpful. I am using it, especially in the first two days. Uh, it has good effect, mobility of the, of the knee, and good psychological effect on the patient. Because the patient see that his knee is moving, so this reassure him and give him motivation to, that, to maintain what we have obtained. Now, the physical therapy should always include home-based program. And I think we have to give time to our patient to show them and the parents how they can help them doing these exercises at home. So uh, I, I tell the, the patient that this is what I call it sustained flexion or sustained extension exercise. You push the knee, keep the patient this is, I found the best to show the patient and the parents how to do these exercises at home and to show the patient how he can help himself by his, his other leg or his hand. This is very effective in my experience and I have my advices to the patient and to the physical therapy. Mean sharp marble across the shoulder. بيجيك مريض تحسن على الفيزيكال ثيرابي بعد مرة واحدة يجا قال لك ديتيريوريتد والمعالج شد علي وألمني سير؟ أول فاين. This is because in in I'm shoulder surgeon also. In my experience with the shoulder, many patients improve, 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 improving, and once one physical therapist motivated, he do more exercise, pain compensation, the there is reaction from the joint. The patient come with stiffness and pain. So the same applied here. My advice is, I tell the patient, don't accept what they call it, no gain without pain. Don't accept that. And to the physical therapist, I tell him, please don't make your patient hate the exercise. But this is very bad. So, this is advice, and also, the exercise should always be done within the pain limit, pain tolerance. I use this term, I <laughs> tell my patient, don't make your tissue angry, and the same. So if you push power, there will be reaction from the joint, and this will cause pain, and this may lead to further stiffening. So be very gentle. And your knee needs you every two hours at the day time. Don't be absent. Okay? Now, what about definitive surgical? We know that we have to diagnose and then to treat. Now, what about manipulation under anesthesia? Anyone do manipulation? Frankly speaking, I don't do. You do. Uh, you do it manipulation without surgical intervention or after surgical intervention? After? After or anyone do without surgical intervention? You do. It's not recommended. Because if you have, because of the risk, what the risk? If you have your fractures risen, if you do manipulation, you may lead to fracture failure of the fracture fixation concept. Yeah? Because you do manipulation early, and you have the risk of fracture. So if you don't have fracture, for example, and you do it after three months, all the scarring tissue is mature, it's very stiff, and if you push, what will happen? Fracture. Distal femur, TPR, avulsion, TPS imperative, and also may have different fractures. Yeah? And when you do that, you can feel it, and you know that there's problem. Right? Right? But there is an important thing that you cannot see. Hardly, 
Because you cannot see in cartilage then, and this you may lead to early degenerative osteoarthrosis because of all these forces. Now, what's the exception for MUA? If you have just simple sharp fracture of the femur, which was to the nail, you have limited knee flexion, so with signs of healing, so you can do manipulation within the early uh, within three months because the, the scar tissue is not mature enough. No excess oh. scarring and there's no risk of fracture. So it should be used only in selected cases. Okay? Now, if we have click loss of flexion, what type of treatment? Again, this is, should be oriented on the cause. So if we have intra-articular cause, we can do arthroscopic arthrolysis. Yeah? We agree. And if we have extra articular codes, we can we have to do quadriceps plasty, either endoscopic, there are beauty kits or endoscopic, or open, which is the most commonly used. And if we have patella muscular or patella baha, we have to do what? Either, either lengthening of the, t of the patella tendon or proximalization of the tibia tibia. Uh, this is uh, uh, how you do, do, this is a case where the patella baha or infera was treated with patella tendon lengthening. Here, how this causes extension loss, uh, friction loss? Uh, we have, I think we have discussed that. And when you proximalize the tibial tubercle, so the patella can move more posteriorly and will not block the lung tachycardia. So this is photo from Philip Dr. Hopper. See how you can do proximalization and fix with three uh, screws, three screws, and it should be long enough, seven centimeters. Otherwise, you may have a risk of fracture. And here, a case for a patient for him who was treated his, uh, him, he was uh, having an ectopy after arthroscopic procedure. The inflection was 90 for this procedure, and after procedure, it was 1.5. So, good inflection achievement after this procedure. Now, this is one of my cases. I have treated here, she presented to me after a tiller fracture dislocation with previous signs of previous symptoms of instability. And this is her initial operation. I did for her fixation of this patella segment fracture or secondary fracture, tibial fluid transfer in the FF and all that of them. And it presents with stiffness. Why? What, why this happened? Because why? As usual, I got money the patient. <laughs> Not confident, so don't do it exercise. Is it? Stomach. <laughs> no, this is a major surgery acute. So I think this is a risk. But also, frankly speaking, the patient was very comprehensive and was very non cooperative with us all, even at home on this particular. So we have to analyze. Why this happened? Is it interarticular or extraarticular cause? This is pure interarticular. You agree? Now, previous operation, which means scarring, like open fracture, and uh, recent is uh, only three months, not four years. So, you think there is extraarticular fracture? No. Uh, the fracture suspected to be healed at this time period, and there is no malunion or osteoarthrosis. So, what to do? Arthroscopic arthritis. And here is the technique. You see here the fracture, it looks good here. here. And you see how the, uh, the contracture, there is no proliferation of the supramatidoresis. You see how it's contracted. Look now to the medial gutter, it's closed. You see? And now I try to see the, from this part of the lateral gutter, it's closed. I couldn't even get it. So this is a typical case of arthrofibrosis. And for that, I did for head arthroscopic release. So, we start with the supralateral arch, we leave all these adhesions, and I go more proximal to tell see the, the quadriceps muscle fibers. And after that, we will shift to the medial gutter, open the medial gutter. And after that, open and complete opening the lateral gutter. You cannot achieve flexion without opening the gutter. You know that. So, this is the lady. This is the patient two weeks after the operation. And before doing the surgery, I said, you have to have uh, to do the exercise also. Otherwise, this will not uh, work. She promised. This is the uh, two weeks, and this is a four-week slot. 
smooth friction, okay, assisted. You see how it helps herself by the other leg. And here, excellent at eight weeks. So I think this is a good result for her case. Now, back to this case. What would you do? Is it intraarticular or extraarticular? Good. You think for. You see here the screw is prominent. You see that this may be one of the causes of pain made on flexion that may lead to flexion loss. We don't know, but we plan to remove this screw off. Okay, now you see it's 90 degree flexion. Here, intra op examination under anesthesia is important. Always, always. And here are the analysis. This is intra articular cause. There's previous operation, so there is excess adhesion. It's chronic, two years, so we may need uh, quadriceps uh, plasty. A fracture is healed, no malunion or osteoarthrosis. So, the decision making arthroscopy and release. And this is what I have said. Okay, you see? After doing the arthroscopy procedure, I went and did release of the muscle as Dr. Mohran said. Release from the uh, plate and from the uh, bone. But here, important when you do this, don't go somewhere or subplane because this will lead to another adhesion. So you could just split the muscle fiber. You have to be gentle with this because the hemostasis is very important because hematoma is bad in this case. Now, I have this pay up. Now, what to do when you have extension loss? So, again, we have to diagnose the cause. And for any uh, extension loss, you have to treat impingement before doing arthrolysis. So, uh, first you, you, you look if there is a cyclone or soft tissue impingement, or if there is osteophyte impingement, or here, any osteophyte because the, the notch. So, the notch impingement is relatively common in our practice. So, you have to deal with that before going to do posterior arthrolysis. Now, if you do this, you still you may have not achieved obtaining full excision. And this is what Professor Philip Lopenhofer described about the resection of the inferomatidal fat. And this is important because what we call it the inframatillar uh, uh, fat syndrome or contractor syndrome. This is important because when you need to extend the knee, again, the patella will need to go back to go anterior. And if not, if it's contracted here, this will prevent full extension. And furthermore, what's important is the biological end. This is how uh, Philippe Lopenhofer uh, uh, described the technique, open technique, to resect the hocker fat. Uh, and here, here, the biological end that this is an inflammatory mediator, this fat induced inflammatory mediator, which even can increase can increase the posterior capsular contraction. So it has a mechanical and biological effect. Now there are uh, techniques describing the resection of this uh, uh, fibrous tissue using arthroscopy. But what's important here, if you do that, you have to keep some layer of fat uh, behind the patella, because otherwise you may end also with fibrosis and problems. Now, I have this patient presented to me four months after this happens. He has extension loss. What are the most common causes? Who knows? Cyclovision and tunnel valves could be. <laughs> and impingement in the tunnel, yeah? This is are the most likely causes, but also type ACL in extension. This is maybe due to tunnel valve positioning. And posterior capsular contraction. This is unlikely because now he's how much? Four months. Now what to do? Uh, MRI showed that there is large site of the, you see here, it's large site of the. So I did for an arthroscopy and you see how large is the site of the region? And notch plastic. Look how the, uh, the ACS. Sometimes you have the ACL file. So what I do before that, I discuss with the patient that if I go in, I will dissect the ACL. But before that, I do bypassing of the posterior fiber, and some sometimes works. Now, this is the patient three months loss of and two flexion. 
and almost always incorrect. Now, this is another more difficult case. The patient presented to me after 15 months, he had ACL reconstruction and he had airless stiffness and arthroscopic arthrolysis five months by his surgeon, five months after the uh, primary operation, and still had this, uh, had this extension loss. So, what I did, as usual, we start with arthrolysis of the presses and gutters, and in this case, it's extension loss. We do uh, decompression of uh, notch plastic, and this were not enough. So what to do? So just early or you will do try anything else. <coughs> the section of the back bell. So I did the section of the back bell there of the old fibrous tissue. You see, I took plane and removed that tissue. And look, this is very interesting. Look, the whole thing. The house is hyperimic, lots, lots of supply, red in color, inflamed, hypertrophic, you see? So I did a crucially partial resection of the whole back bell. But still, not in. So what to do? <laughs> posterior capsular release, pro arm medial, posterior medial. Uh, and this is technique. This is from Philip Rothenhofer. This is he how he uh, do it. You see, my small window behind the medial, uh, behind the MCL, and here the video. By this uh, posterior lateral incision, small window, he feel the MCL by his uh, finger and make a small window just at the posterior border of the uh, condyle, posterior to the MCL. And look, after that, he widen that window. So, medial. Yes, the, the RT is the way. <laughs> okay, and after that, after that, he feel the epicondyle, the condyle that he now opened the capsule and bought this uh, preosterior venture and start to encapsulate to, to, to separate the capsules. This is very interesting. I tried it twice and it was very successful. Okay, now very important post op we have. So you need full extension and the best dynamic which caused extension is the gladiosus muscle. So you have to uh, focus on strengthening of the gladius muscle. Uh, dynamic braces is, are very helpful. Uh, they are not always available and it's available extensive, uh, extensive. So what I do ask the patient to walk a pillow under the heel, some weight uh, on, the, uh, on the distal thigh and start doing exercises in gladiuses with these uh, uh, help. Crutches, protected weight bearing and physical therapy at least for three months. Now, this is a case of extension loss, but what's here, this patient has tibia tattoo fracture presented after years of the injury with extension loss. This is the extreme. What would you do? Anyone would do arthritis or total knee replacement? Who will do total knee replacement? Elderly. <laughs> so, we agree that uh, when you have advanced degenerative changes, you go for arthritis. But how you extend the knee when you are doing arthroplasty? What you do? Many of us do extra cut at the distal femur, yeah? Initially. Here, would you like to do it or not? Look to the patella, the patella here. So in this case, if you do total knee replacement, avoid extra cut at the distal femur. So farther you can go do uh, capsular release rather than to do extra cut. Because if you have more inferior, uh, until uh, how you will make even eliminate infection. So back to this case. Anyone know what this? This is uh, no, no. This is uh, uh, though it's not traumatic, but I put it here for awareness. This is a uh, rare case which we call retractile retractile fibrosis of the quadriceps. I have treated about six patients. Uh, most of them at the age of ten. But this is the the other one. Uh, most of them received injection 
was the fire that tries to do when they have pneumonia or something. And all of them were out from outside Jordan. So please, ensure the you know, not to give injection in the thigh because this is the result. This multiple injection uh, cause fibrosis of the quadriceps, and this will limit flexion. Look here, look what happened here when try. Look to the thigh, look here. You see? I'll show you the top. Look, look, look here. Very tight quite. And because it's 18 years, so I thought that there is capsular contraction. So I started with arthroscopy, but not for minimal increase in infection. So we did the quadriceps plastic and they even go up and release the rectus head. And you see how it's contraction. So by conclusion, Knee stiffness is relatively common after the injury. Uh, proper management needs proper diagnosis to find the source of uh, stiffness and to decide the procedure. Uh, be careful about the UA, please. Uh, treat impingement and bony causes before doing uh, arthritis. Extraarticular causes should be diagnosed and addressed. Patella inferior can cause function loss. Uh, Retromatillar fat fat contraction can lead to sensation loss. So we have to be aware about that. And postoperative rehabilitation and patient confidence is very important to maintain the range of motion obtained in operative. Thank you.